Welcome to EPG Parshala. We would be discussing the module titled Women Owners and Editors in Media. We'll go through the learning objectives. After going through this module, you would be able to explain the rise of women journalists across the world over the years, understand the kind of challenges women owners and editors face in running a media organization, to describe in detail the life and work of some of the famous female editors and owners of the country, and in the end, to state the future prospects for women editors and owners in India. In the previous module of this unit, we discussed about the jobs and wages of women working in media. There, we mostly discussed about journalists and other positions. But in this unit, we would be fo focusing on the top brass, that is the editors and owners or who are females in the Indian media industry. We would take a look by in the history the historical beginnings of women in media, how they started as soft news reporters and then went on to become the editors and owners of media houses. We would see the trends in India. We would do it through the obse uh, by observing the lives of famous uh, editors and owners in media in India. We would take the opinions of people working under them and in the end, based on whatever we would study in the unit, we would state the future prospects of women editors and owners in our country. In the previous module, we read about jobs and wages of women working in media. In this module, we will take a sneak peek into the ream of women workers and editors. Apart from getting introduced to some of the famous women owners and editors of the modern times, we will learn about the challenges these powerful ladies face and also what it's like to work with a women owner or editor. In the next module, we will read about the kind of role conflicts women face while working in the media. Editors and owners are the people who set the agenda for a media organization's way of functioning. However, a close look at the hierarchical structure of major newspapers and television channels in India shows that only a few modern hold, few women hold editorial positions and even fewer women happen to be the owners. There are several reasons behind this lack of adequate representation of women force at the top of the pegging order in media. For long, journalism remained a man's oyster in the country, with only a few women from elite class joining the profession. Since the percentage of women working in media sector was low, there was not much scope for them to climb up the hierarchical ladder. The fact that women always kept their families above their careers in a patriarchal country like India also played a part in creating this glass ceiling. A number of female journalists saw their promising careers cut short by marriages and other family commitments. Since only a few women had a longer run in the profession, the number of female editors remained less as well. However, times have changed now and with, the more, and with more and more women taking up the career in media sectors and showing a willingness to give it top priority, the prospect of a female becoming editor has increased as well. The rise of women in media through the years. We begin with a worldwide context. In the early days of journalism, laws and customs prevented women from joining the profession. The beginning of the 19th century saw women staging protests to gain the right to work as journalists in North America and Europe. Jane Grey Swisshem of New York was probably the first woman who made a mark in journalism. Nellie Bly and Margaret Fuller were also among the other notable female journalists of that era. Bly was, in particular, famous for her investigative reporting by going undercover. Another major hurdle that came female journalists' way was that they were confined to covering soft beats like fashion, food, etc. Still, there were women who challenged this setup and went on to cover beats that were considered men's domain. Ina Eloise Young of the US was one such trendsetter. Ina became the first female sports editor in 1907 and covered baseball, horse race and soccer, 
for Trinidad Chronicle News in Colorado. A mention has to be made of Jeannie Irene Mix here too, as she edited a radio magazine in the 1920s, which was first of its kind for a woman. There is hardly any documentation of women's involvement in Indian media. It is believed that Hemant Kumari Devi was the first known Hindi journalist. She was the publisher come editor of Sur Sugrahani, a women's magazine which began publishing from Allahabad in 1888. A year later, Hari Devi launched another journal for women, Bharti Bhagini from Allahabad. In the early days of press in India, Women edited only those journals which focused on subjects like sewing, cooking, and housekeeping. Most of the women who edited or owned these journals came from affluent families and actively participated in various religious and social movements. In English press, women appeared as columnists and writer here and there. Homi Vairavala who joined Illustrated Weekly in Mumbai in 1930s, was probably the first female journalist on the staff of a major English newspaper. She later became the country's first female photographer. Post-independence, the number of women entering journalism increased and so did the number of women holding top positions. Gulshan Irving edited Eve's Weekly in Mumbai, while Freen Taylor Khan became the first woman to edit two magazines, Trend and Flair. Brain also served as the first female editor of Femina. The mid-1970s saw a surge in the number of females joining journalism. Several factors were behind this surge. The Indian press had become more vigilant post the traumatic experience of emergency and needed fresh faces. The growing women's movements across the world had an impact on the psyche of Indian women as well. Suddenly, educated women of the country saw journalism as a platform to voice their opinions and bring a change. Some of the famous journalists who, hel who held top positions in the media houses in this era include Seema Mustafa, Anita Pratap, Radhika Rana Session, Ritu Sarin, Shiraz Side, Talveen Singh, Kalpana Sharma, Malini Chatterjee, etc. With the arrival of satellite television channels in the 1990s, female journalists got an opportunity to showcase their talent on the screen too. In this era, the number of women holding editorial positions increased both in print and electronic media. Now we move on to famous women editors and owners of the modern era. We begin with the owners. At present, Shobhna Bhartia is the only female owner of a major media house in India. She heads one of the country's leading media houses, the Hindustan Times Group. Under her leadership, both the publications of the house, Hindustan in Hindi and Hindustan Times in English, have made steady progress. Daughter of industrialist K.K. Birla, Bhartia joined HD as chief executive in 1986. The 58-year-old woman is credited with the transformation of HD from a bland daily to a bright newspaper. Madhu Puri Trehan Madhu Trehan is the founding editor of one of India's most popular news magazines, India Today. After studying in the US and working with the United Nations, Madhu came back to India in 1975 and started India Today with her father V. V. Puri. Post-marriage, though she handed over the mantle of India Today to her brother Arun Puri. She later anchored News Track, India's first video magazine. We now move on to the editors, Mrinal Pandey. Mrinal Pandey is one of the most celebrated female journalists of India. She became the first woman national editor of a major publication house in the country when she was appointed the national editor of Hindi Daily Hindustan in 2007. Pandey's rise to the top has served as an inspiration for other female journalists of recent times. Daughter of famous novelist Shivani, Pandey was born in Dehradun and did a master's from Allahabad University before going to Washington, D.C. to study English and Sanskrit literature. She made a name for herself through writing before joining mainstream journalism. After leaving Hindustan, she served as a chairperson of Prasar Bharti. Barkhadat. Barkhadat is among the most popular faces on Indian television. She worked as a consulting editor with NDTV and hosted the primetime show by the name of We the People on the channel.
Delhi born Barkha is the daughter of famous HD journalist Prabhat Dutt. She graduated from St. Stephen's College with a degree in English literature before completing her master's in journalism from Jamia Millia Islamia University. She shot to prominence first through her reporting of Kargil War in 1999. Since then, her career has grown by leaps and bounds as in no time she went to occupy an editorial post in NDTV. A recipient of Padma Shri, Barkha has been the subject of portrayal in popular culture. The female journalist Preeti Zinta plays in Lakshya is said to be modelled on her. Kadambari Murli Kadambari Murli holds the distinction of being the first female sports editor of a national newspaper. She achieved this feat when she was appointed Hindustan Times national sports editor at a young age of 31 in 2007. Prior to that, she had served as the sports editor of HD's Delhi edition between 2005 and 2007. She headed a team of more than 40 staffers and looked after both print and web editions of the newspaper. Kadambari was born in Mumbai, but her family got settled in Delhi. After graduating with a degree in political science from Hindu College, she began her career with Asian Age in 1996. She then moved to the Pioneer a year later and covered Earth Summit II, held in the US. Earlier, she used to write occasionally for sports pages, but later she took to full-time sports journalism. She joined HD Sports Desk in 2000 and carved a niche for herself with an in-depth reporting of sporting events. After leaving HD, she edited a sports magazine, Sports Illustrated. She was the recipient of Sports Journalist Federation of India's Cricket Writer of the Year Award in 2005. She was also selected by India's national broadcaster, Doordarshan, to air messages to inspire women. Malini Parthasarthi Malini Parthasarthi re recently became the Hindu's first woman national editor. Coming from the family of Kasturi Ranga Iyengar, the founder of the Hindu, Malini is probably the lone owner come editor of a major media house in the country. Malini has, a, has an MS in journalism from Columbia University besides having a PhD from JNU. She has been associated with journalism for 25 years and was the first Indian journalist to interview former Pakistan president Parvez Musharraf. Sonal Kalra Sonal Kalra is the current national editor of HD City, a daily supplement of HD which covers arts, entertainment and lifestyle. Her weekly column, The Karma You, which comes every Sunday, has become a rage among readers. An alumna of Indian Institute of Mass Communication, Kalra started her career in journalism as a feature writer in 1990. Before joining HD, she edited a tech magazine. Kalra is a recipient of the Ramnath Goenka Award for Best Film Journalist. Mini Menon A former Miss India, Mini chose a career in journalism over modeling. She currently works with Bloomberg TV India as its executive editor. She looks after the channel's news and feature shows. Daughter of an army officer, Minnie did her master's in communication research from Pune University before going to the UK to study broadcast journalism through Chevening Scholarship. At present, she is among the most well-known TV anchors in the country. Her series, India's Best Known Companies, in which she interviews some of the country's top businessmen, has a huge following. Dina Vakil, A pioneer among female journalists, Dina Vakil was among the first women to hold editorial positions in an English newspaper. She became the first woman resident editor of Times of India, Mumbai's edi edition. Being the first female editor of a major daily, she inspired a number of her contemporaries and young journalists to make it big in the media. Kumi Kapoor like Vakil, Kumi Kapoor is also considered a trendsetter among female journalists. Currently serving as the contributing editor of the Indian Express, Kumi has covered political and social events for the last 30 years. Apart from being a resident editor at the Indian Express some 20 years ago, she also held positions in India Today and Illustrated Weekly. Shobha Day no discussion on women editors can be complete without making a mention of Shobha Day. Shobha, who started her career as a model, took to journalism in 1970. During the course of her career, she founded and edited three magazines, Stardust, Society and Celebrity. Her penchant for sensational journalism made her a household name across the country. 
Day is active in media even today as she writes columns for as many as four major English newspapers of the country. She has authored a number of best-selling books as well. Sunita Aran Sunita Aran is the first woman editor of a major publication in India's biggest state, Uttar Pradesh. She achieved this feat when she was appointed the resident editor of Hindustan Times' Lucknow edition in 2002. She has kept her post to date. Baghdad-born Sunita was brought up, brought up in Delhi. She started her career in journalism with HD in 1982. In a crime-infested state like UP, Sunita made a name for herself as an astute political reporter. She has covered several elections and Ayodhya imbroglio since joining HD. She regularly appears on television channels to give insights into UP's politics. Shoma Chaudhary Shoma Chaudhary is one of the most famous print editors of the recent times. She became famous while working for Tehelka magazine. She held the position of managing editor in Tehelka and was instrumental in helping the magazine become a pioneer in, in investigative journalism in the country. Currently, she is the editor-in-chief of Catch News, a multimedia digital organization. Born and brought up in Kolkata, Soma did a post-graduation from University of Delhi before embarking on a career in media with Doordarshan, where she produced more than 40 shows on books and writers. She switched to the print later and went on to work with the pioneer India Today before joining Tehelka, where her career took a real flight. Shoma is recipient of a number of awards, including Ramnath Goenka Excellence in Journalism Award. Apart from these above-mentioned names, there are other women like Sharda Obra, Anuradha Sen Gupta, Sagarika Ghosh, Nidhi Razdhan, Nidhi Kulpati, Mayanti Langer, etc., who have held top positions in their organizations and brought laurels to the community of women. Challenges women owners and editors face. The power and respect that comes with a top position also accompanies challenges of various kinds. As an editor or an owner, one is responsible for everything that gets published and therefore one has to be very careful in making decisions. Besides, as an editor and owner, one has to also ensure a friendly yet competitive atmosphere at the workplace. So does it make a difference if an editor or owner happens to be a woman and not a man? What are the extra challenges that a female holding top position in a media house has to face? Let's find the answers from one of the women editors herself. There is no such specific challenge that you have to face because you're a woman. My predecessor at HD told me that it's not the person but the chair that commands respect. His words have stayed with me to date. Once you are an editor, people look at you as an editor and not as a male or female, says Sunita Aran, senior resident editor of Hindustan Times, Lucknow edition. Aaron, though, is quick to point out the level of commitment a woman is required to show to have a successful career in media. Of course, you have to give your work a priority to climb up the ladder. I never took a leave when my children were sick or had their birthdays. I, in fact, never told anybody in the office that I had children. My work always came first for me and that was one of the reasons I could come all the way to this position. On being asked about the discrimination or lack of support from male members, Sunita says that it does exist in the industry, but she has never faced any such thing personally. A strong editor, she believes, can ensure no such discrimination exists. As an editor, you have, to f you have the full authority to set things correct. If you are a no-nonsense kind of person, nobody will dare take you lightly, she says. Aaron, who has been at the top of the helm in HD for the last 13 years, also rubbishes the prevalent theory that women in journalism get promotions slower than their, than their male counterparts. Again, it comes down to your ability to last and give consistent performances. It took me 20 years to become editor. But then you have to see that I started my career from the scratch. It does take time. Today there are many women editors like Barkha who are very young, she concludes. What it's like having a female editor or owner. In this section, we will learn about the kind of changes and perspectives a woman editor or owner brings with her in a media organization. We will also read about the experiences of those who have worked with a woman editor or owner. Saida Farah Rizvi, who works with HD City in Lucknow, says a woman editor brings aesthetics to her workplace. 
Women are born with a sense of aesthetics and they bring that to their work too. Our desk is headed by a woman and you can see that it looks more organized and decorated that, than any other desk. One of UP's well-known sports journalists, Sharad Deep, terms his experience of working with a female editor the most enriching. Deep worked under Kadambari Murli and was deeply impressed with her hard task manager kind of approach. I learned dedication and managerial skills from her. She was such a hard task master. She always kept us on our toes. Often it happens that when you go on a tour to cover Ranji matches, you reach the stadium late, late as no one bothers about it. However, Kadambari would keep herself updated about each and every event. She once reprimanded me for two hours and I had failed to, as I had failed to reach the stadium on time. He says, adding that the young editor would also ensure a home-like atmosphere in the office by cracking jokes and talking to everyone like a family member. Veteran journalist Amlendu Asthana of Patna finds a woman editor much more sensitive and caring than a male editor. From my experience, I can tell you that women make far better editors. I have worked with a number of male editors in my professional career, but I found Mrinal Pandey ji the most sensitive editor I have ever had. She would listen to our problems like a mother and treated us like her kids. Apart from being extremely popular with their colleagues, women editors also have played a key role in giving more coverage to issues affecting women. For example, Sunita Aaron of HD Lucknow introduced a yearly HD Women's Award program to felicitate female achievers from the state four years ago. The award program has become a smash hit over the years and last year its winners included Lakshmi, an acid attack vic victim. The Future Scenario Manu Joseph, in her book, Making News, Women in Journalism, mentions an anecdote featuring Times of India's only women editor, Dina Vakil. When Vakil became resident editor of Mumbai edition of TOI, she got a card from a market agency saying, Congratulations to the young lady of Bori Banda. In reply, Vakil wrote, Nice try, but I am 48 years old. Vakil's was not the lone case. Many of the female journalists of her generation held editorial positions only when they reached 50s. Mrinal Pandey, Kumi Kapoor, Bachi Karkaria and others had to wait for years before being appointed as editors. Even among them, only Pandey managed to become national editor, while others had to remain content with the post of a resident editor. From the 1990s onwards, the scenario has changed as several young female editors have cropped up during the last 20 years. Kadambari Murli became national sports editor of Hindustan Times at a, at a young age of 31, while Barkha Dutt rose to editorial position in NDTV even before reaching mid-30s. Minnie Menon was appointed executive editor of Bloomberg TV when she was only 32, whereas Anuradha Sen Gupta was given the command of features section of CNBC TV 18 at a, as a young age, at a young age as well. The fact that only a handful of women editors exist even today is not because they are still being discriminated against. Women's less representation at the top of the ladder in media is owing to several other factors, says Sunita Aaron. There are professions in which women have risen late and journalism happens to be one such profession. The number of women editors in media is in proportion to their representation in the industry. In the earlier days, only a few women would remain in the profession for a longer period and therefore chances of becoming an editor was very less. Today, as more and more women take to journalism and treat it as their top priority, the number of female editors is increasing as well. The glass ceiling is bound to cave in sooner or later. From what has been witnessed over the last 10 years, it can be predicted that in days to come, we will see more number of female journalists reaching the top position and becoming editor as well. With the rise of women entrepreneurs in the recent time, it is likely that they will make their presence felt in media sector too. So this was the unit, Women Owners and Editors in Media. What we, saw as, what we saw was, first of all, the history of how the women made a mark in journalism around the world. Then we came to the Indian scenario, the very initial women who made a mark as editors. We talked about the owners, the very few but still promising owners in our country. We talked about the rising uh, position of women in the media in the country so many younger women who are coming up as editors and many more who are joining as journalists. We talked about the challenges they face, 
we also talked about we also talked to the colleagues of these women editors who only had positive things to say about their bosses this was the unit for you thank you <laughs>